Hi, I'm Jason Barnes, and I'm the first Bionic drummer. Meaning that I play drums with a fairly advanced Bionic prosthetic arm. When I was 22, I was involved in an accident at work and was shocked by a transformer, which ultimately led to the amputation of my right hand. After my accident, I lost pretty much everything, not just my hand, but my house and my life as, as I knew it. I didn't really know where to turn or what to do, and the only thing that was positive in my life was music. So I kind of knew that that was going to be like my rehab and was going to help me bring me out of this hole that I was in. Hi, I'm Travis. I travel the world producing incredible stories. The world is full of unique people, places, and animals. And it's my goal to make compelling videos that show that. Follow me on this journey to uncover amazing stories from around the world. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to iWonder TV. So we're gonna head down to where my accident happened. It's been about eight and a half years since the accident and I actually haven't been there since. So I was basically standing on this right corner cleaning those two fans that you can see on the edge when the transformer exploded and then it arced a bolt of electricity into my back. And uh, when it happened, it actually knocked the power out of the whole town square. So all of the traffic lights were knocked out. And luckily, the one of the McDonough uh, fire departments is actually like not even 100 yards down here. So they actually heard the explosion and were almost here immediately to help get me off the roof and transfer me to Grady. After about six or seven surgery, they informed me that there wasn't really much left to salvage on my hand, and I was kind of just devastated at the point. They kind of gave me the option to try and keep it. It could be like a 10-year process, and I'd be lucky if I even had any mobility, or I could amputate it and move on with my life. Obviously, at first, being a musician and everything else, I wasn't really quite sure how to feel about everything, and I was kind of distraught and depressed, and I kind of made the decision to go with the amputation and try and get my life back because I, I didn't want to be stuck in this situation situation for the next 10 years and never really be able to play music with a non-functional hand. A couple weeks after I got out of the hospital, I proceeded to drag my drum kit out, tape the drumstick to my bloody bandaged arm, and proceeded to try and play. It hurt pretty bad, but um, I think kind of right then and there, that was like the deciding factor for me to keep going with my dreams and my life and trying to do what, I'm, what I wanna do. So a few months after I got out of the hospital, I decided to enroll into Atlanta in Institute of Music and Media for drums and percussion. So during my time there, I was there for maybe about two weeks and had one of my first private lessons with my teacher, uh, Eric Sanders. He actually asked me if I had heard of Gil Weinberg, a professor at Georgia Tech who built um, musical robots. He proceeded to show me a video of Shimon, Gil's marimba playing robot. Obviously I was completely mind blown and, and you know this guy's right down the street and kind of kind of sparked the interest and, and kind of thought maybe this would be the guy to reach out to. At the time it was just kind of like this far-fetched idea and something that was never gonna happen. I guess right time, right place kind of scenario. Gil was kind of looking for his next project and I kind of needed a musical robot, if you will, so he thought what better than to try and um, augment the human and machine together. So after I met Gil, we had the idea of developing this um, robotic drum arm. Um, didn't really have any idea where to start or what we were gonna do. This is like a one of a kind, first, first of its kind. And so we started developing this drum arm that would, one, work through EMG, so it could uh, pick up electrical signals from a residual limb and control the stick accordingly. So we'd have different modes to where I could flex and it would send a signal to the stick as if I was bouncing a stick with my fingers. Gil and the National Science Foundation approached me with uh, an idea of having kind of an artificial intelligent factor of the, into the arm. 
And so that's when the idea for the second stick came into play that, again, kind of ran off the same algorithms as Shimon did um, with the mind of its own. It understood music theory, it understood time, and then it would just kind of play its own rhythms. So with the two-stick drumming prosthetic, uh, each stick actually can move independently. They have its own motors. Um, and each stick can play right around 20 hertz per second, which is like a combined 40 hertz. Um, and this actually allowed me to break the Guinness World Record for most drum beats in a minute with a prosthetic arm by achieving 2400 BPM, which is humanly impossible. I think the, the record um, by a human was around 13 hits per second. Since then, we've kind of started with other ideas on try, trying to figure out how to control bionic limbs and prosthetics with more accuracy. Um, so when we, we started developing uh, a, a bionic can that was 3D printed that would allow me to move all five of my fingers individually um, to allow me to like potentially play piano or type on a keyboard, etc. As far as I know, I was one of the first people, if not the only people, to be able to move all five of my digits on a prosthetic hand and actually be able to play like a melody on a piano with it with almost 99% accuracy. So that was amazing in itself. Please welcome Jason to the show. So yeah, after we made the, the first prototype drum arm, we um, kind of got some media shots and posted some videos and kind of explained how it worked. I was actually invited as a guest musical artist um, on the Doctor's TV show to play drums and kind of tell my story. And during my time there, they kind of surprise gifted me um, a $100,000 prosthetic hand that I obviously couldn't afford at the time and a $2,000 gift card to Guitar Center. To open my hand, it's kind of this motion. To close my hand, it's this motion. Same with like the wrist uh, to rotate. It's kind of the same thing, but you just hold it. So you can hold it all the way if you want. It just never stops, but it's the same motion. And it's essentially just these motions, but in here. So yeah, after I was completely grateful to, to be able to be fitted with something like this, um, this technology is pretty rare around the world. Um, most countries don't even have things like this yet, and countries that do, it's very rare to find someone that is fitted with one. Either they are, work with a company, they're a representative, or they just have a ton of money, or a great insurance company, which is not really something that exists at the moment. Can you use really hard? Uh, so you can grab like a brick, or a rock if you needed to. It's not uh, gonna like crush um, like a closed can or anything. Yeah, you squeeze it as hard as you can. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, I, I wasn't one because sometimes people's uh, skin gets pinched in these things, so you get a blood blister, but not enough to like break anybody's uh, bones or anything like that. One, it's a medical device. Two, it's hard to get small motors like that to be that strong. Uh, and then three, I also don't really have any kind of like user feedback or feeling from it. So I don't, uh, I can't feel how hard I'm gripping something. Uh, I can kind of only judge by the sound of the motor stressing out and then uh, visual cues from looking at the hand too. So some of the opportunities that arose um, initially from an accident and from developing the, the, the first uh, drum arm, um, it's allowed me and Gil to actually travel the world over the last few years. We've been to multiple countries like Russia, China, Germany, Turkey, the list goes on. And generally it's just kind of opened the world uh, to possibilities for me. So after my accident, I had no idea that I would be where I am today. It's completely mind blowing that we're, we're doing the work that we're doing and we're kind of paving the way and hopefully creating the next best technology uh, in prosthetics. Uh, I didn't think that I would be working with Georgia Tech. I didn't think that I would be producing music, still playing music, and still traveling the world and playing shows still. Um, so I'm extremely grateful for that. So most people know me as the Bionic Drummer, obviously from the work that we do at Georgia Tech, but I also produce uh, a lot of different music, anywhere from metal to pop to uh, nature meditation style of music. Um, pretty much anything except for country. <laughs> I. Uh, I kind of love all genres. I love producing music and I love making music and it's kind of just an outlet for me to create and kind of express myself without having to speak. Yeah, so a lot of people wonder how um, I produce music and make everything that I do uh, when I'm missing a hand. Basically, I just kind of use most of my prosthetics to try and help me out in the process. So sometimes I'll use my drumming prosthetic uh, and I'll use like the sample pad and I'll play um, 
a lot of the drums that I'm trying to program in there on the sample pad. Or if I use real drums, I'll get on the, the real drum kit and record with my prosthetic and then put it inside of Ableton. Uh, I'll still use my robotic uh, prosthetic hand to help me play. It just, I, I don't have full control over all my fingers, so I basically just have it set up to where I'll use the one finger. Um, and it'll just help me kind of hit stretch notes. Like if I'm trying to hit like some kind of like weird chords over here, I can still hit a lot of notes. Yeah, so having the opportunity to work with Gil and the rest of the team at Georgia Tech has just been completely amazing. I mean, some of those kids are some of the brightest minds there. Gil is, is a complete genius in itself, and everything that he creates is just completely blows me out of the water. Anything from Shimon, which, you know, thinks for himself and is able to jam with you like a real human is, um, and helping me develop my, the robotic drumming arm that we did, and then even moving on to some of the ultrasound technology. It's just been like a completely amazing experience and a humbling experience, and I honestly couldn't change it for the world. So I'm really looking forward to the future and developing a lot of the prospects we've been developing because they not only do they help me, they help people all around the world uh, gain back their quality of life and things that they love. And so that's just something that if I could go back and take everything back and not have this accident, I honestly wouldn't. I, I love what I do now and I couldn't see myself do anything else.